Okay guys, here we are back at my messy bench today. Um, I'm getting ready to ship this um, locomotive. Um, I do not have a box for it. And so I'm gonna go over kind of what you need to do about boxing. I see guys on the forums all the time. Somebody shipped me a train, they put it in a box with a bunch of bubble wrap or, or peanuts and come back all smashed. Um, there's things that you have to do. I've shipped a lot over the years. Um, to be correct in your shipping, you actually have to double box it, double box it for your insurance to pay. Plus, you have to have two inches of, um, of, of packing around the interior box, technically. But when you got a train like this that has handrails that are intact, you have to be careful. You just can't throw it in a box. So um, I'm going to kind of go over how I do it. I've, I have not lost a locomotive. I've gone from the shipping 30 pound locomotives down to this one is under 10. So anyway, what I have here is what I start off with is I figured up a box trying to be economical, getting it to him. And, um, we just got to secure the train. So what I did first, I got a piece of, um, of old paneling that I had up at the, up at, from scrap. And I went on the, um, when I saw and I, I cut the two, I cut two grooves that were just wide enough for the wheels to set in. So it, it's locked in that way. I mean, it's actually the width of a, of a train track. So I've got that locked in initially. I mean, it's not gonna keep it from raising up, but it's got it locked in from moving side to side at this moment. So what we're not gonna start working around securing the locomotive to this uh, piece of wood here. What I do, I have a lot of foam that I, I have from different projects, especially in modeling, building my uh, layout. So what I, these just happen to already be cut to the height of the railing here. So what I do is we don't want any scratching of, of any of the locomotive at all. Also, this was a, the panel was kind of slick and you need to have a rough surface. So I went ahead and sanded along here so my glue will connect to it. But anyway, um, what I'm gonna do initially is come in here with the foam. I don't want any of the foam rubbing directly against the train. So I come in here, I just take a paper towel and I fold it over and we're gonna secure this to this both sides. We're gonna use hot glue gun and I'm gonna secure these sides here. I'm gonna go ahead and get both sides done and then I'll come back. But, you, but this, the paper towel's there folded over I'll probably attach them to this piece first and then glue that in. I have one for both sides and it only comes even with the flush with the end here because we're going to put an end cap on it up and over the connect um, the connector there. <coughs> Sorry. But anyway, let me get this put together real quick. I'll be back and we'll move along from there. Okay guys, here I'm back. I just want to show you what I've done so far. I've got the sides glued on. I got end caps glued on. What I've done is I come back with another piece and I've tied all these end caps together with one long piece. All right. This locomotive is not going anywhere. can't go up, down, anywhere so far. So the next thing I'm going to do is so we don't have any chafing, I'm just going to put a piece of paper towel across the top here. And I'm going to glue like in three places a cross piece. What you do then is so it ties it all together and they don't break this is I'll eventually just across these, I'll come across with some packing tape, come across it. That keeps it all together, keeps anything get busted. So I'm going to get that part done and then we'll be back. Okay, guys. Here I'm back, I've got it all packed. I've got the three places marked on here. I did add two pieces here because I don't want anything coming down here and scratching this top. But anyway, this is in here good. I mean, it, it's not going anywhere. Um, if you read the fine print and packing, all, all items have to stand withstand a three foot fall. That's what it used to be. Okay, so now all I gotta do, this is six and a half inches tall by six inches wide. I'm going in a box that is nine by 10 by 30. So that gives me room to put um, two inches of packing. What I'll probably do is take a piece and glue it to the bottom so, it's, so I can slide it in and then I'll slide the parts 
in around it to get it um, to get it um, that nice and tied in the box so it doesn't wiggle around. But you can do any locomotive. I've done Bachman locomotives. I've done um, uh, any kind of car. You just have to build your sides up and just keep it away from anything that's fragile. It's like the horn here. I'm staying away from that. Um, I'm staying away from anything, any detail part that I'm afraid I'm going to break. And you can just put a hard point somewhere, you know, across a boiler if you have to, but you can work it out to, to, um, to make it happen. Um, but the main thing is get you a good base. Um, make sure you put two inches of packing around is what they say. If you're really tight for space, this will this will alleviate a lot of that damage that people from throwing them into a pack of uh, peanuts and shipping them. Also, make sure that you label your box. If you don't label it fragile, it, they some some of the people will not pay off on a claim if it is damaged. You have to mark it uh, fragile. You have to um, mark it on um, all four sides. Um, or they may just dis, just disregard. Also, if you have a claim, you have to keep all your, you pull it out, it's broken, you have to keep all your packing is so they can see how it was packed. If it's not packed appropriately, they'll, they'll uh, not let your claim go through. So anyway, I hope this helps. I see this happen all the time. Some, some guy throwing, a, like I said, a locomotive in a box of peanuts and shipping it. This here, this should get here without any trouble. It took me 30 minutes to, to build a box. I keep plenty of this scrap on hand. Um, so you know, it, it's, it, it's doable and you can ship stuff safely. Hope this has been a good video for you. If you have any questions, you can always uh, check out my website, tiesplanes.com, and I have um, my email address and phone numbers right there for you. So if you have any questions, feel free to give me a holler. Thank you very much.